Sky Church, first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you that are visiting our service for the first time. Thank you so much for coming to Great Life. And as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord, I don't believe in just delivering messages. I want to deliver a message that I believe can change your heart because in studying this message, it changed my life. The word of God continues to change us and that's why we need his word in our lives. After this service, I want to encourage you, get the CD to this message because like I always say, if you just listen, you'll probably retain maybe 2% of this message. If you listen and take notes, maybe 40%. But if you listen and take notes and also get the CD, I believe that you'll be able to retain as much as possible, maybe 100%. And on top of that, the Holy Spirit will minister to your heart. So let's pray and then we'll get into the Word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you and I thank you for the privilege and the opportunity, the honor that you've given to me to speak your Word into people's lives. Lord, I declare that you will think through my mind, you will speak through my lips, your words of simplicity and accuracy. Somebody needing hope today is going to be filled with hope. Somebody needing courage is going to be filled with encouragement. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would teach and that I would just say what you want me to say. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen and amen. You know, we've started this series called Hope, H-O-P-E. Last week, we kicked it off with the first letter of the word hope, that is H. H basically means hope. Hold on. And we said there are four things that you need to hold on to. You know, I'm really excited about modern technology because we can preach the gospel and we can encourage one another by way of Facebook and Twitter and uh, also through the means that you're listening to and watching me right now as I speak into your life. And so, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. The wise man says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred. What does the word defer mean? It doesn't mean to get rid of anything. It just means to put it on something else. Your hope has got to be in God. Don't defer your hope by putting it in your job. Your hope has got to be in God's word. Don't defer your hope by putting it into the words of the world. Because the words of the world, they cause us to get discouraged. They cause us to get afraid. They cause us to get all shaky and everything like, oh my goodness, I wonder what's going to happen. Listen, your hope has got to be in the Lord. Can I challenge you with this one thought? There is I hope versus my hope. Now, I hope is probably a little bit more popular because of the iTunes and iPhone and i this and i that. But then there's my hope. Here's the difference. Before I get on the plane, I can choose to say one of these two things. I hope I'm going to get to my destination or my hope is in God and he's going to get me to the next destination. When it comes to finances, I can say I hope my finances will increase. Or I can say, my hope is in the word of the Lord. And because I'm a tither, my hope is in God's promises. So do you kind of get it? I want you to kind of process that through your mind and through your spirit this week and ask yourself, am I living according to I hope or my hope is in the Lord? Four things that you've got to hold on to. Number one, Hold on to your confession. Your confession is what you say. Don't talk about where you are. Talk about where you're going. Number two last week, we said, hold on to your commitments. What have you committed to do? You're in the house of God. You've committed to this church. Hold on to this commitment. Don't let seasons, don't let events, don't let circumstances turn you away from your commitment to the house of the Lord, to your brothers and to your sisters. If you're married, stay committed to your marriage. You know, there's a saying that the grass seems greener on the other side. Well, maybe it is, but when you get there, you'll find out that it's just from where you were standing at because you know what? Everyone's grass needs to be fertilized. Everyone's grass needs to be mowed. Everyone's grass needs to be watered. The grass doesn't become greener just by happen chance. They've got to do work also. Hold on to your commitment. Number three, we said hold on to your convictions. Hold on to your convictions. 
Your convictions are what you believe. The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You get unstable in one conviction, that means you're going to become unstable eventually in everything else that matters in your life. If you want hope in your life, you're going to have to hold on to your confession, hold on to your commitment, hold on to your convictions. And the fourth one we said was hold on to your commission. Do you know that God sent you here with a commission? A commission says where you're going, what you're supposed to do. A commission says your assignment in life. And if you don't know what your commission is, what your assignment in life is, in life is I pray that you continue to, to listen in on this series because you're going to come to realize that hope is when we have purpose.